Let's uh, pick up where we left off. We just sort of done power. Uh, well, I don't think we did this last question. Uh, I have a 50 ohm resistor that's hooked up to a power supply, 150 volts. Just a second before we get to that. Uh, so the food drive is still going. Uh, we're still we're at about a little about a hundred or so items. So you'll bring stuff on Friday or on Monday. In case of water counts as twenty. Well, it depends on me. Twenty-four. They count individually. So. Okay. All right. That's fine. Um, you can bring them either to class or. If you want to bring it back off, that's going to be great too. Get something real quick. Uh, and then the exam will be on Monday. On Friday, we'll have a review, so we'll spend probably just all day Friday. Yeah, so bring questions if you have, and we'll use this time. I'll just sort of summarize all the topics. Right now, we're looking at you know, chapters, all chapters. I could go either way. I'm, I'm undecided about it. Well, let's try this. I have a 50 ohm resistor hooked up to a power supply of 150 volts. What amount of energy is dissipated across this resistor in three seconds? In the previous question, we found the power of the resistor. It was the same situation we found the power. So now I want to know what is the energy dissipated in three seconds. Remember, a definition of power is uh, work over time or energy over time. All right, about 10 more seconds. Stop it. 155, 155. That's right. Uh, power is energy over time. So our power times our time is equal to our energy, uh, which is, we found that it was, what was it, uh, 450 watts prior in the previous one? That's our uh, V squared over R. So the power is 450 watts times our time, which is three seconds. And that's equal to 1350. 
we have a few more clicker questions on this. This is the end of the chapter, though, for chapter three. Chapter three is really meant as a sort of a precursor to chapter four when we get into circuits. But uh, let's finish up the chapter three questions. We've done this one now? We've not done this one, right? Have we? Yeah, we did this one. Did we do all of these? Oh, we finished that one. Okay. All right, we're good. All right, well, let's move on into chapter four. Um, so chapter three is Ohm's law and the definition of resistance, and then we start to introduce power. And then chapter four is carrying on with that. We'll do resistors in series and parallel, and then combination circuits. And then uh, look at households, multi-loop circuits, and household circuits as well. This chapter deals only with direct current circuits. This is in contrast to alternating current. Uh, I don't know if we're going to do AC electricity or not. Alternating current is like what we get out of our outlets in the house. Uh, that means that the current switches back and forth. We'll talk a bit about when we get into magnetism why we do that, uh, why we use alternating instead of direct current. <coughs> It has to do with our transmission of our electricity. It allows us, well, you remember we talked about the transformers, how we can have a step down or a step up transformer, and it, it takes high voltage and makes low voltage. It's because of alternating current that the transformer works. And we'll talk about that later uh, and how the, the mechanism behind that works. But in this chapter, we'll deal with direct current circuits. And actually, a lot of what you learn with DC circuits will also apply to AC circuits, where you have that alternating current. Um, First of all, the electromotive force. A battery or a power supply is a source of this electromotive force. We've been calling this V all along, but uh, here we're going to differentiate because we want to different or we want to, to make the distinction that all batteries have an internal resistance. So now instead of calling a, a battery having a voltage V, we're going to differentiate and call it a, a script E. So this is the symbol we use for EMF, is the script E. And it's a lot like the voltage that we've been talking about. Although uh, the voltage that we'll talk about across a power supply will be an observed voltage. And this is an ideal voltage. Um, the reason that those are different, the observed voltage and the ideal voltage, is because they all have an internal resistance, R, batteries and power supplies. Now that internal resistance should be small, but it's measurable nonetheless. So if like in the lab, you put your, uh, your old meter or your, your multimeter that measures resistance. Do you all use the multimeter bit? The little small digital things, yeah. You might have these at home, but the electricians all have kind of multimeter. Uh, if, you, if you set that to measure resistance and you put the leads on your power supply, then you'll find that there's a certain amount of resistance through that power supply. Likewise, for batteries, they have a certain amount of resistance. Uh, everything that produces electricity has a certain amount of resistance. Um, just because it, it's made up of stuff, and stuff has resistance. But this internal resistance causes a drop in potential. And it, you can think of it as stealing away a portion of the battery's uh, power, or a portion of the battery's voltage. So if we think of this as a battery, uh, we can think of it. We can think of it as a uh, as an ideal source of EMF plus some internal resistance. And the terminal voltage. That is, the voltage that we measure across the leads of that battery is equal to this. That terminal voltage, I'll call it delta V, is equal to the ideal EMF minus the drop in potential across that, uh, that resistor, that internal resistor. Now remember Ohm's law is V equals IR. So that drop in potential is going to be whatever current you have going through that battery times the internal resistance R. And then that will be the, the measured potential that you have across a battery. 
So for example, let's say that you know this ideal EMF is 12 volts. That's our ideal source of EMF. And then let's say that we have an internal resistance of 2 ohms. And if we have a current now flowing of I equal to 1 amp, then our battery will experience, or if we go and we want to use this battery, what is our usable voltage going to be? It's going to be 10 volts. Because I have 12 volts, I'm losing 2 volts across, the, across this resistor. That is I times R, 1 amp times 2 ohms. And that'll give me 10 volts up here. Now what happens if your current increases? What happens to the usable voltage across this battery? It increases, right. So if you increase I, say if it becomes 2 amps instead of 1 amp, then your 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 usable voltage or your terminal voltage is going to be 12 minus 4 or 8 volts. So internal resistance is bad because it steals away from that voltage that you have in the battery. Uh, you don't want to have voltmeters, or we don't really have voltmeters in cars anymore, but it used to they had voltmeters that would measure the voltage on the system or the voltage it's either off the alternator or off the battery, but it's largely the same as I understand it. But in those cars, when you would turn on a, a high a high power consuming device like the air conditioner, I don't have air conditioners, but turn on something that uses a lot of electricity, then you would see the voltmeter go down because of this reason that when you increase the current, then you uh, you decrease the voltage allowed from the, the battery because of that internal resistance. All right. Um, yeah. So if you've ever, you ever use those rechargeable batteries, like the little AA batteries that you can recharge in the wall, in the wall socket. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, as they get older, their internal resistance begins to go up. This is the same as true for your cell phone battery. So as your cell phone gets older and then that battery begins to degrade. Uh, when you start to charge the battery, that can sometimes get really hot. And the reason for that is, is that internal resistance is increased, and that internal resistor, or it's not an actual resistor, but the internal resistance that acts as a heater inside of the battery. That can be very, very bad, right? Because if you heat up your battery, it's going to have to explode or bust or whatever. So uh, as batteries get older, their internal resistance goes so up, especially for rechargeable batteries, because you're recharging them over and over again. Uh, at some point, they're just no longer usable or even a, a, a danger. Let's try this quick test. A battery consists of an ideal EMS source of 12 volts. I run a 4 amp source from the battery. The actual potential difference is 10 volts. What is the internal resistance in the battery? Just a few more seconds, I'll stop at uh, 115, 115. All right, very good. B is the right answer. Uh, let's see. I told you the frog's drink joke, is that right? Let's see. Did I tell you the drill joke? Oh, I told you the drill joke? All right, I'll try to think of something. I can't think of anything right now. I need some new material. All right, uh, so the internal resistance is V. Did I mark that correct? Yeah. Um, so my delta V, that's my terminal voltage, is equal to E minus IR. Uh, I know this is 12. I know this is 10 minus I, which is 4. And so R has to be a half an ohm to make that true. 
By the way, this expression that we're doing here is a, is a form of the loop rule that we'll see. We'll use the loop rule for all sorts of circuits, but particularly for our multi-loop circuits. So I'll present this in just a bit, but that's called the loop rule. All right, let's look at this circuit. Um, here in this circuit, I have a, a battery or an EMF source. Right here, it provides potential or voltage for the circuit. Here I have an internal resistor, and then this is another resistor. Now this internal resistor is part of the battery, but from here on out, you know, we'll just say, well, this is just another resistor in the circuit. So uh, that the whole internal resistor won't really affect how we deal with the circuit. We'll just say, well, this is just part of the actual circuit. Each of these provides a change in potential for electrons that are traveling through the circuit. So if I imagine that I have an electron right here, it's going to go across the battery from here to here, and it will gain energy. It gains potential. So it has a, a change in potential that's positive. And then as that electron travels through the circuit here, it's going to have a drop or a gain in potential. So it's going to have a drop in potential here, and then another drop in potential here. So if I write those changes in potential, I'm going to have a positive change in potential here, a negative change in potential here, and a negative change in potential here. We'll find that the net sum of all those things, the sum of those three changes in potential, will equal to zero. All right, so uh, they gain energy in the battery. The electrons gain energy, and they lose energy in the resistors. And that energy goes into whatever it is that the circuit is doing. They can go into mechanical energy, like it can be used to spin a motor, thermal energy. Um, it can also go into chemical energy, like if you're recharging a battery, you can convert that electrical energy or that potential that's lost in the resistors can actually go into recharging a battery. We'll see that a little bit later. All right, so our changes in potential for the EMF is going to be plus E. For the internal resistor, it'll be minus I times R. And then for the other resistor, it'll be minus I times big R. Um, and then when you go around the entire circuit, the change in the potential, the total change, is going to be zero. This, by the way, is called the loop rule. which has the, the sum of the changes in potential for the whole circuit across a loop has to equal zero. This is basically saying that uh, when an electron returns to the, the same spot where it was previously in the circuit, it's going to have the same energy as it had the previous time. So an electron at a particular spot in the circuit will have the same energy when it returns back to that spot. Remember, voltage is a measure of what? Okay, yeah, potential. But potential is a measure of what? It's a ratio of something, something per something. Energy per. Yeah, that's right. Energy per coulomb or energy per charge. Yeah, so it's uh, energy per charge. All right. So here for our delta V for the loop is going to be plus E uh, minus IR minus I big R equal to zero. And then for the EMF, like if we want to find the EMF, then we just say uh, IR plus IR. And that will find the EMF. All right, let's look at resistors in series. Just like we had for our capacitors in series and capacitors in parallel, we'll have similar rules for resistors in series and resistors in parallel. Uh, for resistors in series, they look like this. You can have two or more resistors. They just come one after the other. And we have a few rules about this. I'm just going to summarize them right now, and then I'll sort of step through them more, more rigorously. But just like we have for capacitors, we have rules for resistors in series. The first one will be the equivalent resistance is equal to R1 plus R2 plus whatever we have. The second rule will be the resistors in series have the same current. 
and the third one will be that resistors in series have, or excuse me, uh, for resistors in series V equals IR. And the fourth one will be that for resistors in series, the total voltage equals the sum of the individual voltages. This was true also for uh, for capacitors in series. Uh, remember, for capacitors in series, they didn't have the same current because we didn't really talk about current in terms of capacitors. Once they're charged, there is no current. But capacitors in series have the same what? That's similar to this. You remember what capacitors in series have the same? Series is interesting. That's right. Capacitors in series have the same charge. Now the equivalent is equivalent capacitance for capacitors in series was the opposite of this. Remember, for for capacitors, the equivalent capacitance was that one over one over C. Right, these are all in your equation sheet. At least this is, and this is, and this is. You need to know that they have the same current. All right. So if I think about this circuit, uh, I know that delta V is equal to IR1 plus IR2. That comes from the loop rule. That, by the way, is also this law. But we just showed that with the EMF, that if we assume that around the loop the total change in energy is zero, then this has to be true. That our change in potential here is equal to the change in potential that crosses two resistors. So delta V is IR1 plus IR2. Um, then I can rewrite this as delta V is equal to I times some equivalent resistance. And that equivalent resistance then uh, is given by R1 plus R2 plus however many resistors you have. And the equivalent resistor is always bigger than any individual resistor. That seems obvious. I, I hope it seems obvious for resistors in series, both mathematically and then also just uh, intuitively. Remember, resistors, they do what to electricity? They help to do what to speed it up, slow it down, no, slow it down. They resist the flow of electricity. And so if I have a small resistor and a big resistor, if I put a really big resistor in, uh, that's going to limit the resistance, right? The resistance will actually be bigger than that. You know what I mean? Like if you have two pipes, one is big and one is small, one is big and one is small, the small one restricts the flow of the fluid, say, to one cubic meter per second or whatever, then that means that the fluid is not going to flow at any rate faster than that one cubic meter per second. Right? The smaller of the two dominates. Okay. Uh, that won't be true for resistors in parallel. That's, that's just why I make a point of it here. All right, some other rules about resistors. Uh, resistors in series have the same current. I think of it as, you know, if I have these two resistors and I have a certain current flowing through this, these two resistors that are in series, whatever current I have here is not being diverted in any way. So I have to have the same current here. Uh, we saw that last semester. What did we do this last semester? There's a similar rule for fluid, it's called the equation of continuity. That uh, anytime you have, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, we don't do fluid in this class anymore. But uh, anyway, resistors in series have the same current. And then also the loop rule, the change in potential across the resistors in series adds to equal. change in potential across the battery. All right, so let's look at these two light bulbs. They're hooked up in series. Uh, first of all, if I remove R2, what's going to happen to the circuit? I have two light bulbs there in series. If I remove one of the bulbs, what's going to happen to the circuit? All right, it's broken, right? It's like the old Christmas lights. They don't really make them like this anymore, but used to, Christmas lights were in series. Uh, although some Christmas lights still are in series, but they have ways to get in around this. Where if you remove one of the light bulbs, the whole circuit would collapse. Because you have a break in the circuit, and then electricity cannot flow. But what if we were able to just remove R2 and then replace it with a wire? Uh, what would happen to the other bulb? 
they would like for you. Mm-hmm. So you say, okay, yeah, so the light bulb is still light up, and then it would also be brighter. Uh, if you can think about it this way, let's say that I have 12 volts here. If I have two light bulbs, what's going to be the voltage across each? If they're identical. Uh, six and six volts. We have that with capacitors as well. Uh, but if I have 12 volts here and I have six, I'd have six and six volts here. But if I take one of the light bulbs out, then the remaining light bulb I have a voltage of what? Not six now, but what? Well, I have 12. That comes about from the loop rule. So if I have 12 volts here, I have 6 volts and 6 volts here. But then, if I get rid of one of the bulbs, then I'm going to have the full 12 volts on one bulb. And since the power is equal to V squared over R, if I increase the voltage by a factor of 2, I increase the power by a factor of 4. All right, so if R2 is removed, uh, the bulbs go out. Now, like I said, this is like those old Christmas lights. Which aren't really made that way anymore. Uh, they're made in a couple of different ways. We might talk about that later when we get into household circuits. Uh, but also, if you replace that R2 with a wire, then R1 will be four times brighter. All right, it has twice the voltage, and this leads to four times the power, because power is V squared over R. If I double my voltage, I quadruple my power. All right, let's do an example. And you know what, guys? I think it would be good to have either a series or a parallel circuit on this next test. I'll give you a heads up as to what to expect, but it'll make, a, I think, a nice, easy question for you all. Like, I'll, I'll tell you what it's going to be beforehand. And then we won't do combination circuits. Those are a little more complicated. But you think I could do a series or a parallel circuit? Is that a whole other number? might be good for the test to give you a nice or easy 10 points from the test. Right, let's, let's do a, a series circuit. It'll be, so if you have a, a series circuit, it'll be something similar to this. Here I have three resistors in series with a 10 volt battery, and I want to know the equivalent resistance, and I want to know the voltage across each. So the first thing to do is find the equivalent resistance, and so I can do that. We will do that pretty quickly. I have a one, a two, and a two ohm in, in series. So that equivalent resistance is 5 ohms. I'm going to write this down in just a second. So I have 1 plus 2 plus 2 is my equivalent resistance. That's 5 ohms. And then the next step you want to do is to find the current. Now resistors in series all have the same current. So if I have it, and they also have the same current as the equivalent resistance. So if I have a 5 ohm resistor that's equivalent to these three, what is the current through that 5 ohm resistor? Where I is V over R, so it's what? Two amps. So I have two amps through the 5 ohm resistor. That means that I have two amps here, two amps here, and two amps here. I have two amps coming through this circuit, so I have two amps through all three of these resistors. <coughs> so what is my voltage here? I have two amps on a 1 ohm resistor. I have two, that's I times R, 2 times 1. I times R, 2 times 2. So four, and then I times R two times two, which is four. That's pretty easy, right? Let me write it down for you so that you can see. The steps are pretty simple. First, you find the equivalent resistance. That's going to be one plus two plus two. That's equal to five ohms. And then the current through the first resistor, R one, is the same as the current through the equivalent resistor. So that's going to be since V is equal to I times R, I is equal to V over R. It's going to be over R equivalent. So that's uh, 10 volts over 5 ohms. That's equal to 2 amps. Now that's also equal to I2, and that's also equal to I3. 
So, so far I have two amps here, two amps here, two amps here, two amps here. Everywhere in this circuit we have a current of two amps. And then if I want to know the voltage, so now I know the resistance and the current for all three resistors, uh, I can find to the voltage. Resistors in series all have the same current, so they all have two amps. So V1 is I1 R1. That's 2 amps times 1 ohm. This is going to be 2 amps times 2 ohms. And 2 amps times 2 ohms. Alright, you can check this because I know that these three numbers have to add up to equal what? 10, which is the voltage across the battery. So 2 plus 4 plus 4 is 6 plus 4 is 10. Or if you just knew the voltage across the first two resistors, because the, uh, the change in potential across resistors in series as to equal the delta V across the battery so if you know the voltage across the two first two resistors then you could find V3 like this you could say uh, the voltage across the battery minus V1 minus V2 so that would be 10 minus 2 volts minus 4 volts and that would equal the 4 volts. Y'all follow what I mean? If I just know two of the voltages, let me go back to that picture. If all I know is this voltage is 2 volts and this is 4 volts, so I say 2 plus 4 is 6, so I need another 4 volts to make 10, so this has to be 10. Right. Let's do parallel circuits, they're even simpler. So let's do a parallel circuit. Actually, let's do this quick test. What is the potential across the 8 ohm resistor here? Find the equivalent resistance, find the current, and then you can find the voltage across each of the resistors. Everybody's doing really well. I'm going to do about seven more seconds. I'll stop at 120, 128. Oh, sorry. All right, that's right. Very good. Uh, so I have an equivalent resistance equal to 24 ohms. I have a current then of V over R. That's 12 over 24. That's 12 volts over 24 ohms, which is a half an amp, 0.5 amps. And so I have 0.5 times 4 is 2 volts. 0.5 times 8 is 4 volts. 0.5 times 12 is 6 volts. I'm looking for the 8 volts, so B is right. And then you can check your answer. You can say 2 plus 4 plus 6 is equal to 12. And it should be, it should be 12. All right. Let's do parallel circuits. They're, they're even simpler. Um, 
it's really the combination circuits that get complicated. Uh, for resistors in parallel, we have a couple of rules. First of all, just like capacitors in parallel, they have the same what? Y'all remember capacitors in parallel? Right, capacitors in parallel have the same voltage. And for the same reason, uh, resistors in parallel also have the same voltage. Also, uh, for resistors in parallel, the current entering a junction must equal the current leaving a junction. This is called the uh, junction rule. We'll use it for the next exam for multi-loop circuits. Right. Uh, basically, this says that if I have, say, two currents coming into a junction here and here, then that current has to equal whatever is leaving. So let's say I have 8 amps here and I have 10 amps here. What must this current be? It has to be 2 amps. Because you can't lose current. You can either lose or gain current. So whatever current's coming in here has to be coming out here. Otherwise, you're losing current to some outside source. Or you're gaining current from some outside source. And the equivalent resistance for resistors in parallel is the same as for capacitors in series. That's 1 over 1 over R1. It's 1 over R2 plus however many resistors you have. Right. What happens to the equivalent resistance as you add resistors? What happens to the equivalent? Does it increase, decrease, or does it stay the same? As I add resistors in parallel, I keep adding resistors in parallel, what happens to that equivalent resistance? Think about this mathematically, but you might want to think about this sort of what happens to the paths of the electricity have to pick? Excuse me. Does the equivalent resistance increase? Does it decrease or stay the same? I remember resistance acts to restrict the flow of electricity or resist the flow of electricity. So if I add additional paths for the electricity to flow, what's that going to do to the overall resistance as I add resistors in parallel? Because as an electron comes along this path, comes here, it has several paths that it can take. It can go here, here, or here. What happens if I add additional paths to that overall resistance? Okay, I'm pretty well. I'm going to stop at 125. Okay, so re equivalent resistance decreases. If you don't believe me, you can just try out with the equation that 1 over 1 over R plus 1 over R business. Uh, as you add resistor, it makes the denominator bigger, right? That 1 over 1 over R business. Uh, and so that causes the equivalent resistance to go down because it's an inverse of a number. But you can also just think about it intuitively that if I add resistors here, I'm increasing the number of paths that the electricity has to take. And so that's going to give it an overall less resistance because if it has additional paths, no matter what the value of the resistor is that you add, whether it's big or small, it's still going to increase the number of paths that the electricity has to take. And that causes the equivalent resistance to decrease. So the equivalent resistance decreases. That's right, yeah. So that, that's a good analogy. In fact, water is a good analogy for electricity in general. All right. So the equivalent resistance also is always uh, smaller than the smallest resistance. Let's do an example. These are pretty straightforward. 
I hear I have a circuit with two resistors in parallel. I just want to know the current or the voltage across each of the resistors and then also the total current. These are in parallel, so what's the voltage here? That's right, resistors in parallel have the same voltage, so that's 10 volts and 10 volts. Right? 10 volts and 10 volts. So now you can also find the current here and here. And then you can also find the current here. I have 10 volts and 10 volts, because that's the same as here. Uh, then I also can find the current, I is V over R. That's 10 over 2, or 5 amps. Here it's I is 10 over 4, is 2.5 amps. So what is this current right here? This goes back to our junction rule. It says that whatever current coming into a junction right here has to equal the current leaving that junction here and here. What was this current be? 7.5 amps. 7.5 amps. So my current here, I, is equal to 7.5 amps. Yeah, Josh? Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm going yeah, to uh, go through it right now. So uh, here, I'm going to show you a couple of different ways okay. how to get it. So I have 5 amps here and 2.5 and amps here. I know that I have 10 volts across each of these. Because there are parallel ten volts and ten volts. Okay. Ten volts and ten volts. And then I know that because I have ten volts across two ohms, I have five amps here. Because I have ten volts across four ohms, I have two and a half amps here. Now I can get that total current just by saying five plus two and a half. There is another way to find the total current. And that's by finding the equivalent resistance. The equivalent resistance is 1 over 1 over 2 plus 1 over 4, wasn't it? Yeah, 2 and 4. That's uh, 4 thirds amps. Right. So I can redraw the circuit as just one resistor that's 4 thirds amps with a 10 volt battery. And then this current, I, is equal to V over R. That's 10 volts over 4 thirds, not amps, I'm sorry, ohms. 4 thirds ohms. That's 30 over 4, which is 7.5. So notice this is the same as what we found here. That's 7.5. Just find it in a different way. Now with me on this? OK, yeah, that, that's a perfectly valid way to do it. And if you want to do that, that's fine. Uh, but it's also just as easy to find the voltage across each and the current across each. Um, as I said, I'm inclined to have one of these problems. Not, like, not a multiple choice, just sort of, I'd like to get resistors perhaps on this next exam. One either just series circuit or one just how do y'all feel about that? I think it could be good if it could give you an easy question. Do you think you could do this right now without preparing? Okay, let's do that. Let's have a, a question about resistors in series or resistors in parallel. Okay, no multiple choice, so just sort of make sure that you can do these two problems. Uh, they're going to get more complicated when we get into combination of all three circuits, but just sort of as a uh, like a pairing shop into that will be good. Okay. No, okay with that? Alright. Uh, I also want to tell you, I'm pretty sure that we're going to have the exam in the auditorium, not in this room. We'll still need it. Is that okay? Is it not for y'all, it's for my other class. Uh, it's, it's sort of big in this room, and it's also kind of really good too. Uh, we'll probably have the I'll let y'all know what's up. Use one. Oh, outside. Okay. okay.
Um, let's do this quick test. What happens to the voltage in each resistor as you add resistors in parallel to the circuit? The voltage in each resistor. Does that voltage, the voltage in each resistor, does it increase, decrease, stay the same, or does it depend upon the value of the added resistors? So I'm adding resistors in parallel. I keep adding them. Boom, boom, boom. What happens as I add those resistors uh, to the voltage in each resistor? All right, I'll stop at 40. Very good. Say, I don't think I've heard this one. What do you call Santa's helpers? Subordinate causes. I'm sure you can tell your English faculty. All right, so our voltage stays the same. It's like the resistor is hooked up to end of, to the same to the same battery. So each one has the same. I have, I have 12 volts. That means I have 12 volts here, 12 volts here, 12 volts here, and 12 volts here. Now what happens to this current? Does that current A increase, decrease, or stay the same as I add these resistors? So where it says voltage here, this current in particular, the current, the total current. What happens to the total current? Does an A increase, B decrease, or C stay the same? Okay, we're all over the board on this one, so I'm trying to give you a little guidance. As I add resistors, they're going to draw a certain number. Okay, let's say that all these resistors are the same. Right? So let's say that I have, a, I don't know, a 6 ohm resistor. That means I'm going to have 2 amps, 2 amps, 2 amps, 2 amps. And as I keep adding 6 ohm resistors, what current are they going to draw? 2 amps, 2 amps. So as I keep adding resistors, I keep adding another 2 amps. So then what happens to this current, that total current, as I keep adding those resistors? Does it increase, decrease, or remain the same? All right, I'll stop at 125. All right, that total current will increase. All right. If I have six resistors, each having two amps, then I'm at 12 amps total current. But if I have 10 resistors, each having two amps, what will be my total current? 20 amps. So as I add resistors in parallel, that total current keeps increasing more and more. That's what happens in your house. Yeah. And the current is dictated by whatever the demand is on the power. Right. So, like in your household, your house is laid out as a big parallel circuit. And as you keep adding resistors, if you keep adding things to a circuit in your house, you actually have a bunch of circuits in your house. But if you add things to one circuit in your house, it keeps driving up that current until you get too much current, and then what happens? Yeah. So you blow a fuse or your circuit breaker or whatever, you get you exceed the, the safety capacity of that circuit. Right? So your fuses and your circuit breakers, they measure this current, and they kick off when, they, when it's not safe. We'll talk about that later. We'll, we'll, I think we'll stop there. And uh, listen, on Friday we'll review, we're looking at chapters two and three, all right? We will have these resistors in series or parallel, uh, and we'll be looking at voltage, potential, right, the potential of charges. Uh, we'll look at capacitance and capacitor circuits. We'll have a, a combination capacitor circuit. And um, you can find examples of that in the old test and then also in the homework. It's certainly kind of where you have to find the charge and voltage and all the capacitors of the circuit. And then, and then chapter three was on current and resistance. And that also includes power. So. All right.
<laughs> not the hardest thing. Well, the chapter two can be pretty difficult. Uh, on Friday, we'll review. Okay. Have a good day.